Hey guys, welcome back to our Applied Mechanics. This will be part two of our sine or cosine um, rule. During my previous video, I'm not too sure what happened, but for some odd reason, I couldn't keep recording. But anyway, I decided to re-record the second part where we're now trying to use what we got using our cosine rule to kind of help us calculate the included angle. And this will now be using our sine rule, okay? So remember with our sine rule, we have A over sine A. Is equals to b over sine b is equals to c over sine c okay and you can then look at what you have compare it with what you're trying to calculate and then we can then choose which two sides to use so from what we have or what we've gathered so far we have the length of a and we have the length of b we just calculated the length of c then the only angle we have is angle at c so we already know that c will be one of our contenders it will be one of the sides that we pick then from this point on we are trying to calculate the angle um, theta which is the included angle at b and that already directs which one we are going to use between the a or b right so we can just write it out on here and say b over sine of b is equal to c over sine of c right then the length of b from what we have is 20 then sine of b we'll just leave it as sine of theta because it's still unknown the length of c is what we've just calculated 17.32 over the sine of 60 okay i don't know why things are getting dodgy but anyway stick with me stick with me stick with me stick with me okay then up to so far you check what you can substitute if there's anything you can substitute then you can take it from that point on so let's just check on one side of our equation you can choose whether to cross multiply or to just simplify it from that point on so with 17.32 divided by sine of 60 we get 20 over sine theta is equals to this essentially gives me 19.999 so i'll just put it as a 20 okay then from that point on i choose to multiply both sides with sine of theta i hope this doesn't get confusing because of our space constraints then we have 20 is equals to 20 sine of theta it looks like we just took one thing and sent it to 20 different directions but anyway then I'll divide both sides by 20. Sine of theta now gives me 1. Now this won't even need a calculator because we know if sine of anything gives you 1, essentially shift, shift sine of that will be 90 degrees. You can plug it into your calculator and just say sine shift sine of 1. It gives you 90 degrees. And what this tells us from our diagram on here it says this is a 90 degrees this was given as 60 and you would know if you're trying to calculate this alpha on here that the sum of the angles of a triangle i still don't quite remember how to write out that expression but the sum of the angles of a triangle equal to 180 so you can say 180 minus 90 plus 60 um 180 minus 150 that gives you 30 right then now we know that the value of that alpha over there is 30 and that's essentially how you can use your sine and cosine rules collectively to calculate mostly the direction of your force if you have a resultant or an equilibrium force but you can use the cosine rule to calculate the magnitude of the force then you'd use the sine rule to get the direction of the force. In the next video, I'll be going through an example where we essentially put that into practice. See you then. Cheerio.